coverage of the Grand Prix of Indianapolis is brought to you by HelloFresh. You already know that HelloFresh is America's number one food delivery kit. But did you know that you can now customize your favorite dishes with HelloFresh's new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you. The name of the game is customization. With HelloFresh, it's easy to adjust your plan and increase your order size to help with meal planning for large groups or to have leftovers for lunch the next day. And as always, HelloFresh recipes include pre-portioned ingredients, and that means less prep time for you and less wasted food overall. The David Land Pit crew is powered by HelloFresh this May. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LAND16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com. Use the code LAND16 for 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Welcome to the unofficial, official start of the month of May. We're still going the wrong way, we're still turning the wrong direction, but at least IndyCars are on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it is May, so we've met some of the qualifications. Um, it's been a hectic day. Um, you know, we talk about a lot of tracks not having a whole lot of track time. Um, while it's a condensed schedule here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the road course, only two days of action. Uh, the practice and qualifying was today and the race is tomorrow. We actually had two practice sessions and uh, qualifications and then we have a morning warm up tomorrow and we have the race. So today was so, so hectic, and in fact, yesterday was um, when we got to talk to a lot of the drivers at the bullpen. You've already seen uh, my uh, work with Pato Award, where really I just kind of talked for about five seconds, and Pato talked for 12 minutes. So the name of the game right now, and the big talking point for tomorrow, is that a lot of us are expecting that this hot, unseasonably hot weather uh, will kind of fade away throughout the day tomorrow, and by the time the 3.30 p.m. start, Eastern time uh, happens that uh, the race will be raining or there will be rain in the atmosphere. There hasn't been a rain race in IndyCar since this very race in 2019, which everybody remembers as a very exciting duel between Simon Pagenaud and Scott Dixon in which Simon Pagenaud ended up winning that race. I asked a few of the drivers what they thought, uh, whether they want a dry race, a wet race, or whether they don't really care. So there seems to be a chance of rain. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it! <laughs> okay, so, so that answers the first question. You want it to rain, but we haven't had a rain race in three years. Obviously, you were pretty quick the last time it rained here. Um, you know, what are we kind of expecting, or what can we expect with the, with the aero screen kind of thrown in as a new element? Well, I don't think that would do anything specific. We have a, a defrost button. Maybe most people don't know that, but we actually have a defrost button, so if it fogs up, we press the button and it hits up from the inside and gets rid of the fog. So I'm not worried about that at all. Um, I think it's fine, quite frankly. It's just uh, would be nice to get a rain race and shuffle things around a little bit. But, uh, last time it rained, it was fun. I looked this morning when I left the house. I was like, come on, rain, rain, rain. And obviously it looks like it's only in the evening at the moment. But maybe I'll be dancing tonight. It might rain. Confidence level in the rain. I think you've maybe done two or three sessions in the rain in these cars. Uh, what do you, you know, think? You know what pato means in Spanish? What does it mean in Spanish? Duck. Duck? Yeah. Really? Duck swim in water. <laughs> I think I'll be just fine. Expecting some rain. Uh, what should we expect? Who knows, man. Honestly, at this point, just shake it all up. I mean, if a rain race happens, anyone from P1 to P27 can win. So um, it's, it's going to be interesting. I kind of don't want that because we have been so fast here in the drive, but like, if it is wet, well then you know what? You have a high likelihood of having something great happen. And also a high likelihood of being home quite early. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. Now correct me if I'm wrong, the only time you've driven an Indy car in the rain was Coda in 20. There seems to be a pretty high chance of rain for Saturday. Do you have any kind of an expectation or worry perhaps about it raining on Saturday or, or will you be able to handle it no problem? I think everybody's the same way, right? Um, I think we did also mid-Ohio qualifying 2020 mm. in the rain. It was like mixed conditions, but um, yeah, I think everybody's the same way, right? Like we didn't drive in the wet at all last year, which is odd. Um, but uh, yeah, 
I'm up for it. Like I love it. I love uh, dancing in the rain, and I think a lot of of drivers are good here. We saw actually 2019 was it here where Pagano and Dixon were battling at the end. I think it makes it really interesting for the fans as well. So hopefully it's not raining during the race because otherwise it's bad for them um, and also for driving wise. Um, but if it's wet, I don't mind. I'll, I'm up for it. There's a high chance of rain on Saturday. Do you want it to rain? Do you not want it to rain? Are you comfortable in these cars in the rain? I would take rain over dry, to be honest, right now on these cars. Another major factor in wet racing, of course, is the tires. We haven't seen, as I said, a wet race in three years. So I took the opportunity to go over to my friends at uh, Firestone and ask, what does it take to put a rain tire onto the racetrack. Well, we're here with Corey Williams and Lisa Boggs from Firestone, and there's a potential for rain tomorrow. We haven't seen these tires for about three years. So tell me about the development process of a rain tire, because I imagine testing this is very difficult to do. It's very difficult to test, yeah. You kind of like, you never know what to expect with the weather anyway, so it's very difficult to have a day where you can actually test it. So we do a lot of, we'll call in-house testing. So we have a lot of neat facilities that we can utilize not only in the Americas, so our tech center in uh, Akron, Ohio, but we have a tech center in Rome, Italy, and then also Japan, Tokyo, Japan. So we can utilize a lot of their facilities as well to simulate what it would be like for an actual rain tire to be on track during a wet condition. What's unique about our tires is it's a directional pattern and it's also asymmetric. So what that means is, as you can see, there's kind of a direction to the pattern. And that's because we want to evacuate the water as most efficiently as we can in the contact patch because we do not want to have hydroplaning. So to evacuate that water, we utilize the directional pattern to kind of shed the water outside the footprint as the tire rotates. And now the asymmetric part of the design is basically you can see the center groove here. Yep. This isn't really quite in the center of the tire. Yep. So that's what we mean by asymmetric. And what that means is, so when they camber, we have a lot more contact on the inside shoulder once they camber a tire versus the outside shoulder. So it's designed specifically for the position on the car. So they're directional and asymmetric. And something I always hear, a stat that I always hear with rain tires is the amount of gallons it dis displaces. How many gallons can this tire displace at a time? It is quite a bit and it all varies on speed too. So it depends on water depth and uh, speed that the car is going, but it, it's pretty efficient. That's fantastic. Now, we're, we're, we may be thinking there's a rain, there's going to be rain tomorrow. Strategy always so important. There's new compounds of tires with the dry tires. How, when was the last time you guys had a major step forward with the rain tires? 2020. Yeah. Wow. Or I'm sorry, 2018 is actually when we had the, yeah, the okay. newer compound. So these are the same rain tires that raced uh, last, yeah. last year, or uh, not last year. Uh, 2019, the last time we had a rain race. So should be that the teams are very familiar with this tire, I would imagine. Correct. Yep. Lisa, there are so many things that we talk about um, in this kind of new world. Um, one of the things that we've discovered in short track racing is that there are shortages, supply chain issues, all those sort of things. How has Firestone been able to manage some of those difficulties with kind of our new world? And, and it doesn't seem like anyone's really having trouble getting tires uh, from Firestone. No, we are able to meet all of the requirements and all of the allocations agreed to for the season. We've actually been able to ebb and flow as needed. We've been able to continue testing. So we are not having any issues with running our season optimally as possible. Oh, that's great news. And finally, I guess, since we're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, um, obviously the, the GP isn't the big prize. The big prize is the Indianapolis 500. But talk about how important that this place and that event is for the Firestone Company. This place and the Indy 500 go back to the first beginnings of Harvey Firestone manufacturing, testing, and selling tires. Uh, he was the believer in win on Sunday, sell on Monday, and he was out here with Firestone Tires testing, proving his marriage with this place is about technology, innovation, and moving things forward. So he was there, we were on the winner, Ray Haroon, first Indy 500, and we have not looked back since. So for us, it is literally in our DNA. It is the roots of our company. Um, and we are as proud of that, as excited about that, as 
anybody could be, and we cannot wait for the Indy 500 coming up in a couple weeks. So obviously, not only did we have practice today, but we had qualifications. And because of that, that means we get a starting grid. So let's take a look at the starting lineup for the GMR Grand Prix of Indianapolis. This event has been running since 2014 and Will Power is one of the most prolific drivers in the event on the pole position alongside Alex Pillow, the series point leader. Joseph Newgarden alongside of Connor Daly, All-American Row 2. Connor Daly really needed that result and he got it. He's looking forward to the race, as you heard. All Arrow McLaren on row three at Pato Award alongside Felix Rosenquist. Callum Eilat has looked so strong as of recently in IndyCar. He's on the inside in position seven alongside of Christian Lundgaard. Row number five is Jack Harvey, a finally a good qualification for him alongside Romain Grosjean, the controversial man in this series. Scott McLaughlin alongside Graham Rahal, who will be right behind Romain Grosjean. Take note of that on the start. Takuma Sato alongside Colton Herta, who got bounced in Q1. Renus VK and Alexander Rossi, so many surprises getting knocked out in qualification one. Marcus Erickson, another surprise alongside Devlin DeFrancesco. Almeyer Schenk in row 10. Elio Castroneves alongside Simon Pagino. Scott Dixon. Uh, just a terrible qualifying, once again, 21st starting position, but he's finished so well this year, alongside of Kyle Kirkwood for AJ Foyt Racing. Juan Pablo Montoya makes his return to the series in the number six car, alongside of David Malukas. Tatiana Calderon out to qualifies her teammate Dalton Kellett in 26th, and Jimmy the Juggernaut Johnson will be bringing up the rear at one of his most experienced tracks. So, I think we're all kind of hoping for rain tomorrow um, because I think it's really going to throw a monkey wrench into the strategy. I think we just hope there isn't thunder and lightning because that means we're going to be sitting here until kingdom come and possibly going into Sunday, which I don't think anybody really wants. So, it, I was surprised today that Renus VK uh, didn't get into uh, either Q2 or Q3. Uh, actually, quite shocking, to be honest with you. Cool little cameo from Graham Rahal there, but what do, what do you think about that? Um, but yeah, it was a pretty shocking day today with the qualifications and, and which drivers were bounced out and which drivers were in, in, out, all that exciting stuff. Um, let me think. I think we're going to see, even if it's dry, I think we may see a really um, crazy and unpredictable race. There are so many drivers throughout the field, and here come the Indy Lights drivers. Look at that. Hey. Come on, give me here, McElroy. Yeah, we're filming right now. Yeah, Let's finish the freaking race in any lots. <laughs> we love it. There's Hunnel McElroy. Second place, second place in uh, in Indy Lights. Look at that. Wow. We actually finally got an interview with one of these drivers. That was, look at, now see, that was big brain because that man just got in front of what, 20,000 people? Fantastic. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.